I'm on the Isle of Sheppey um, in the southeast coast of England and uh, I'm going to a place called Sheerness which is right in the end uh, I think it's the mouth of the Medway and uh, the Thames estuary now this area of um, Great Britain has always been defended for centuries and um, it's mainly been defended Oh, it's been a naval base for a long time and it's been defended by the army and the navy together so we're going to look at um, uh, some of the fortifications mainly from the second world war and um, maybe i'll tell you a bit of history before they were part of the second world war now what you see there is um what well, it's called the Central Bastion Martello Battery or also known as the Martello Battery it's from the 17th century and uh, initially it had uh, um, probably I think it was muzzle loaded guns which were uh, loaded from the front and not the, ba uh, not the rear eventually were replaced by four breech loading guns at the end of the 19th century in 1919 it was decided that the quick firing guns be installed at this bastion which were mounted on martello style tower which is that one there the martello towers are generally round like that and they seem to be tapered as well that third tower at the back if you can see it it disguises a house with you notice a chimney on it and a, a, a slated roof just to try and disguise it from the germans really i'm not sure if that would work or not but Anyway, that's what they tried to do. And that was a battery observation post. It was actually disarmed in, before World War II, but the Navy kept it as a, an observation post, just in case of any submarines or U-boats and Kriegmarine ships. This is probably a defensive barrier as well. It's um, a bit of a ditch, really. Um, just over the other side there, you can see the, uh, looks like a switch light barrier uh bunker i should say or a pillbox and uh it looks as though it had metal shuttering on as well on the tower there that looks like a martello tower um they put some quick firing guns on top of there and below was all the where all the ammo was stored it was pretty obvious to be honest with you now that one over there you can see is a uh it's called number two tower and um it was a, a mine control tower uh, extended defense officers post which is XDO for short and what that did was it controlled a couple of what they call mine booms which were stretched across uh, this water behind me now across this water here somewhere here obviously it's not uh, part of it anymore there was two mine booms there was the um, Sheerness boom which would have been probably over there where Sheerness is, we're not quite at Sheerness, not far off though. And there was an even bigger one, a bigger boom, uh, running across probably around about this area because the XDO off, or the post behind us um, is directly where we are. And this was like a double defence. Um, I sorry, it was called the Minster Anti Submarine Boom. That mine control tower is very similar to one that um, Burnham on Crouch. Um, very similar designs. Now, Burnham Crouch apparently is only two of that type. One's supposed to be in Scotland, but to me, that looks exactly the same. Now, I can't see below it because I can't get into it, but there's not a lot of difference between them. Now, the Sheerness boom, which, um, which was stretching across Sheerness to Grain, to Grain Fort, was um, electric controlled by winches so in other words if they wanted to drop them they could lower them down so the ships could go over the top of them or they could wind them up the minster mine boom stretched over to uh Shunisbury, which is in the other quite a while quite a way away actually it must have been a massive type of boom that now i think that was controlled by boats um i think it was either opened up and closed up by the by possibly tugs or whatever it may be to let the shipping in and out because it's such a big uh, expanse of water 
uh, maybe a winch wouldn't work from that distance. These quick firing guns uh, were installed because of the um, menace from either really kit quick destroyers or but mainly e boats or Schnell boats as the um, Germans used to call them and they were torpedo boats they could come in very very quickly and um, hit a target and get out very very quickly as well so this was also set up in order to try and combat them as well unfortunately I can't get round to the uh, to the other battery on the Sheerness point so we'll have to try a different way there's another observation post up there and it looks like uh, looking at them there they probably have anti-aircraft gun emplacements just see them through the trees possibly an old uh, anti-aircraft gun positioning um, it's all overgrown now and a lot of it's been destroyed by the sea there's a third boom set up um, further down um, the Isle of Sheppey between East Swale and uh, uh, Shell Ness it's called and um, that was because there was another estuary that I think led into the Medway in other words the Isle of Sheppey is an island at the end of the day and uh, they tried to try and um, could cover every little bit of uh, the Thames estuary and the Medway and anything that actually linked to it this book here has been converted into English this was a study by the German government in the 30s regarding um, England and all its possibilities of um, population, um, built up areas, industries, rivers, estuaries, hills, mountains, everything in here. Now, if they were doing that then to evaluate how, um, how England was back in the 1930s, that must mean that as it says here, uh, German invasion plans for the British House 1940. I'm going to read you a clip out about what it mentions in the Thames, regarding the Thames, which, are, were, which we're actually sacking now, or not at the beginning of the Thames anyway. The Thames begins to widen as soon as it enters London. It is 400 metres wide in the city and reaches 800 metres to the east end. Downstream from the tower, the docks extend continuously as far as Woolwich. Huge grist mills gas works, electric power stations, oil storage plants and refineries and cement and paper factories line the river here and further downstream. The estuary proper begins at Gravesend, 35,500 inhabitants. Pilots I picked up here. The main oil storage plants are located in Thameshaven and Shellhaven on the north bank. Numerous old port towns, harbours and industrial settlements are to be found along the estuary. An important secondary urban centre consisting of Rochester, Chatham, Gillingham and Sheerness with over 160,000 inhabitants combined as developed on the Medway estuary where the Navy has shipyards, workshops and warehouses, mechanical industry paper and cement products, engine manufacturing, seaplane factories and chemical plants, poison gas and also to be found here. So what they're saying is, this is um, this area here is very heavily defended and very heavily dependent on the industries what I just mentioned. Then, thanks for watching. Hopefully, it was of some interest to you. Whether you're living in the United Kingdom or you want to come over here to look at these um, these fortifications, at least it gives you a bit of insight into what um, the um, British psyche was at the beginning of the war, and um, initially with a very little amount of uh, materials and that that we could use in guns. So we just had to adapt as best we could.